Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over Electra. Now, technically, we have been covering Greg Ruckus' run on the character for a short while now. Now, something I should also mention is that Greg Ruckus' run actually takes place in the middle of the 2001 Electra series that was really started off by Brian Michael Bendis. The problem was Brian Michael Bendis did one story arc for Electra and then he left the title completely, which then led Marvel saying, hey Greg, do you want to take over? And he said yes. Now for Greg, he did a great job, but the main goal for Greg was to take the character of Elektra and give her a new purpose. The whole idea of saying she's not just a top-notch assassin, that she can be something else, something better for the actual world, to lead her in a better direction for the actual character. Now, for Greg Rucka, his run was very short on Elektra. What I mean is that this is going to be the last Greg Rucka's story for Electra because right after this story arc, somebody else took over. Now, we might go ahead and just continue our coverage over Electra so that we are able to say that we have covered the entire 2001 series because it's only like 35 or 36 issues, and technically, we're already in the 20s by this point, thanks to Greg Rucka. Now, something else I should also mention is that. For this whole story we're going to do right now, originally it was a four-part story arc, but then I guess things happened behind the scenes. They needed a fifth chapter, so technically it is a five-part story arc. Now, something else I should also mention is that in the middle of the story arc, part two and part three, it is actually done by a different artist. Now, for me personally, I did not really like the artwork done in part two and part three. For me, Part one, four, and five, beautiful. Two and three, eh, kind of felt tad bit weird. And honestly, kind of wondering why in the world they did that for. But it was only used as a way to kind of tell the backstory for the current sensei for Electra, better known as Drake. Either way, we can now officially dive into the final story arc for Greg Rucka's run on Electra. Now, the opening pages for the first chapter that does take place in Electra issue number 18 is really kind of picking up where the first story arc for Greg Rucka, or really the first major story arc for Greg Rucka, had officially left off at. Let me explain. You see, in that first major story arc for Greg, he introduced a character known as Jeremy Locke. Now, Jeremy Locke was actually a character who had lost his wife thanks to Electra. You see, when it came to Electra, she is or was a top notch assassin that could be hired. And so somebody hired her to go after one of her targets, which she actually did. The problem was Jeremy's wife kind of got killed off by just being nearby the actual scene. And so because of that, for Jeremy, his main goal was to change Electra into a better person by putting her through a process saying, listen, you had two chances in your life, and unfortunately, you used both of your chances to be this killer. Why not try to be something good for the world? Why not try to no longer be a killer in this world? And so for him, his main goal was to actually change her. Now, we did learn later on in that story arc that he was actually working with three other people who also wanted to get revenge against Electra because they also lost people close to them because of her. Now, one of those three guys was actually a colonel, and he was able to bring in a small army of soldiers to kind of help out to go kill off Electra. Now, for Jeremy, he didn't want Electra to die, but the other three, they wanted her to die. And so they went after her after Jeremy had let Electra go. And so when it came to the colonel and his armed forces, well, they got murdered completely by Electra. They did not stand a chance at all against her. And so as we dive into the final story arc for Greg Rucka, it picks up where that story arc really left off at. Because as we dive into the open page for the story arc, we pick up with some people examining the dead bodies of those soldiers that were killed off by Electra in that story arc. But while they're doing that, they have no idea that technically 
they're being watched, or not really being watched, but somebody else is there also examining those bodies as well. Somebody who belongs to the hand. Now, this guy, he's able to actually hide his presence. So no one truly knows that he is there. But while he goes to examine all the dead bodies, he was able to realize that these people were killed off by Electra. And so it kind of tells us the hand is beginning to come after Electra very soon. Now we do jump over to Electra and we see her with a character known as Drake. Now Drake was a character that Greg Rucka had introduced in a earlier story arc, who's right now the current sensei for Electra. You see, for Drake, her main goal is to change Electra away from what the hand in the chase had taught Electra over the years. The whole idea of you're an assassin, you're a killer, you love violence, you love blood, you love fighting. Like getting away from those things right there and going into a new direction in her life. And so for Drake in the last story arc, she had to tell Electra that your body and mind has been completely filled up by the hand in the chase. If you want me to be able to teach you, to train you, to make you a better person, you have to clear your mind. Now, for Drake, she realized that she can't change the fighting style of Electra, but she can change the mindset of Electra. And so for Electra, even though she's kind of opened up her mind to allow Drake in, she's still kind of holding on to what the hand and also the chase had taught her. And so it's up to Drake to kind of move her away from those things. Now I want to jump over to Valerity and also Nolan. Now these are two characters that Greg gave us back in that major story arc where these two characters were part of that inner circle who had lost people thanks to Electra, and they wanted to get revenge against her. Now as we saw, Jeremy was not really down with the idea of killing Electra, but the rest of the group, they were down with killing her and so they went after her. Now for Electra, Electra, she let these two guys live. The problem is that for Nolan, he has let everything go. Like he is not down with the idea of continuing to hunt down Electra. But for Valerity, she wants to continue to hunt down Electra because she had lost a loved one because of that woman. And so for her, she's kind of like, how can you just give up so easily? Now, she also mentions that she can tell that Jeremy had fallen in love with her, Electra, and that is why he let her go. Now, I want you to actually hold on to that for the later chapters of this story arc. But while you have the two characters actually talking, they are then confronted by three members of the hand. Really just one at first. The other two come in later. But for this one right here, his main goal is to gather information from Nolan and also Valerity's mind to kind of help him figure out where in the world can he find Electra. And so after he's able to go through their minds, he begins to learn everything he needs to know. Not everything, but a good start in his adventure to hopefully find Electra. Now, I want to jump over to Drake and Electra, who are currently at a playground right now. Now, this playground has been completely trashed over time. And so for Electra and Drake, their main goal is to actually clean up the place. Now, this leads into Drake kind of giving us the origin of Electra. Not the complete origin, but the key points we need to understand what Drake is trying to do for the actual character, better known as Electra. You see, for Drake, she does bring up the fact that Electra had joined the Chase. Now, the Chase is another organization out there that usually fights against the hand. They are literal enemies to one another. Now, the thing was for the Chase is that when they took Electra in, they taught her their ways. But then after a while, they had kicked her out. Now, after she was kicked out, she had joined the Hand. Now, let's not forget, the Hand is a ninja organization, but they worship a demon better known as the Beast. Now, once you had Electra join the Hand, her main goal was to dive into the darkness of the actual group, but not dive too deep into the actual darkness. She wanted to be a light to bring up the good in the actual hand. The problem was, though, over time, she realized she could not fight her way out, and she became their perfect weapon, their perfect death. But then it got to a point where they no longer looked at her as the perfect death. 
they kind of looked at her as something different, not even a ninja, something completely wrong with her. But either way, for Electra, she had left. Now, with her leaving, she now had the skills and the tricks from both organizations to use out against the world, against all her different targets, to become that top-notch assassin. And so, while you have Drake bring up all these different facts, it's really more Drake saying, like, I know you very well, and I know you so well, you're going to be very surprised when I tell you my actual origin story. But for Electra, she kind of believes that Drake is actually mocking her, making fun of her past life. But you have Drake say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm here to tell you I used to be part of the chase as well. And so for Drake, is her saying like, listen, you've been in the darkness for so long that you forgot what the light is like, what his life is like. And so you have Drake saying it's time to bring you out of that darkness, to turn you into what seems to be an actual human, not one of them. And so you didn't have the two characters being able to actually clean up the entire playground. But while you have Electra believing that things are going great for her, she has no idea the hand has now begun to hunt her down. And so when we jump back over to Nolan and Valerity, we kind of find out that they're both dead because the hand was able to collect information about Electra from their minds. And now they're moving on to someone else to get more information about Electra to hopefully find her. But now we have to jump into the next chapter. Now, the next chapter, we actually pick up the three members of the hand making their way over to the next location for them. Now, their actual names are Shadow, Thought, and Pain. Now, we don't need to know more about these actual characters. They're really only being used as a way to wrap up Greg's run on what he's trying to do with the character of Elektra. And that's really it. But either way, they do kill off this guy to take his vehicle so that they're able to get to their next location in a better amount of time. Now, I want to jump back over to Drake and Electra. And you see the two characters right now trying to feed the homeless while working at this shelter. Now, while working there, you have Drake ask Electra to tell a joke. Like, hey, you know, Electra, tell a joke about everyone happy here in the building. The problem is for Electra is that she's still learning how to be a regular person. She's still learning how to have a normal conversation. And so to tell a joke is kind of like a huge step for her. And unfortunately, she's not really good at all when it comes to telling jokes. And so for Electra, she feels embarrassed. But at the same time, it's Drake showing her like, hey, that's part of life. Like it's part of being a human, being embarrassed when your jokes don't actually work out. Now, once they're able to get back over to the dojo, this kind of leads into the origin of Drake to kind of get a better understanding who she is. But before we are able to actually learn the actual origin of Drake, it kind of continues with the whole idea of Drake saying that Electra, if you want to change, you have to open up. But for Electra, it's hard to do that. Now, it's not her saying like, it's the hand, it's the chase kind of holding on to me, it's really more her saying, like, I did a lot of bad things in my past. Like, I had killed off a lot of people. So many people, it can fill up the entire dojo that belongs to Drake. But for Drake, it's kind of like, you don't understand that I actually know what you're talking about. And so it's her saying, Electra, the problem for you is that you're having a hard time letting go and you're having a lot of regret, but also you feel bad for everything you have done in the past. But that's also completely normal. Now, once you have the two characters kind of finish their fighting scene at the actual dojo, it's now time for Drake to say, here is my origin story to kind of show you that it is possible to actually change. It is possible to move on from the hand and also the chase as well. Now, to get into the actual origin of Drake, we have to jump back over to 1947. Now, she tells us that her father had fought in the war. And while being in Japan, he had met a group of people. And with that group of people, he had begun to learn different fighting styles. And so when he came back home to America, he began to teach his kids as well, starting off with James and then James kind of teaching his sister in private. But either way, over time, his son James 
began to pick up everything his father had learned in Japan. And so after that, you then had Drake's father take both his kids back over to Japan to meet members of the chase. And once they met James, Drake's brother, they were kind of like, hmm, you know what? He'll be great for our actual group, and so will Drake's father. Now, Stick was there. And remember, when it comes to Stick, he's the guy who had trained Elektra, trained Daredevil, and most likely other characters out there as well. But Stick was there. And so now we are establishing that Stick had also trained Drake. But not just yet. You see, when it came to Drake and also her brother James and their father, when they had arrived at the temple for the chase, they only trained Drake's brother, James, and her father, not her. And the reason why? Because she was a girl, especially a black girl. Because in that time for Japan, they already hated the idea of white people kind of taking their culture. But now you have a black person coming in, it's extra hard. But you're a black woman, it's like three times hard for just a regular white person. And so they did not train her at all. They kind of kept her away to say, all you can do is just clean our dishes, clean our rooms, and that is it. Now, overnight though, in the nighttime, her brother James would actually teach her the ways that he had learned from the chase. Except one of the knights that were out there training, Stick saw them. And we're now establishing that Stick knew way back then that Drake, when she was a young girl, when she arrived, her father and James at the temple of the chase, he knew that she was special. And so he said, hmm, we got a problem because you not allow James to cheat somebody who's not actually part of our group any of our techniques at all and here you are training your sister and so for stick he gave both drake and james a test by saying listen because you were teaching her one of y'all have to leave one of y'all have to get kicked out and so he said the last person standing will have to stay here while the other one gets kicked out and so for drake and james they had a fight against an army of warriors from the chase now by the end of that battle james fell down he's out but Drake, she stood up. She stayed up, sorry. And so she was able to stay with the chase while you had, well, James being kicked out of the actual organization. Now, for Drake, she was able to stay there alongside with her father. But it was very short-lived. And the reason why? Because she had killed off another member of the chase. Now, it was a complete accident, but she still broke a rule. And so she got kicked out as well just like that. Now, like Electra, she had joined the hand, kind of thinking that if she joins the hand, she'll be able to give back at the chase, but she also wanted to make sure that she did not go too far into the actual darkness the hand gives people, like Electra tried to do in her own timeline. The problem was for Drake is that they put her inside a pit of darkness to fight against the darkness in her heart. And so while getting down there and fighting her opponent, she had killed off her brother. Now that was a huge moment for her, but it kind of did push her into the darkness the hand wanted her to have. And so once she had killed off her brother and once she became an actual member of the hand, it led to her fighting against some members of the chase. And she had killed off four members of the chase. And one of them was her father. So now she had killed off her brother. And now she had killed off her father. And so after doing that, she kind of realized that she had to step away. The hand was bringing her down into their own darkness. And so for Electra, back in the present day, she's wondering how can herself get to that point where Drake is at at the moment. The whole idea of being able to be pulled out of that darkness. And you have Drake saying like, it's not going to be easy. At first, you have to want it. You have to want to have that ability to pull yourself out of the darkness. But once you do that, you then have to work at it. And so for Electra, she begins to cry because she wants to leave that darkness behind. The whole idea of being part of the assassins, being part of the hand, part of the cast, being that killer who loves blood and violence. She wants to leave all of that behind. And so for Drake, she can tell that now Electra is on that right path, but now she has to continue to go down that right path. 
But to wrap up this chapter, we do see the hand arriving at the home of Jeremy Locke. And of course, they're coming after Electra. They need more information about her to figure out where exactly she is at. And so now we have to dive into the third chapter where we actually pick up with a character known as Carson. Now remember, when it comes to Carson, he's kind of like the bodyguard slash assistant for Jeremy Locke. And so Carson right now just by himself chilling, having a good old time relaxing. But then he's confronted by the hand. Now remember, the hand trying to find Electra. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to go to each person that she had contact with in the last few days, weeks, or months to hopefully find the actual location of where she's hiding out at. And so you then have the hand being able to take down Jeremy and begin the process of going into his mind to figure out who to go to next to hopefully figure out where she could be at. And so now we jump back over to Electra and Drake. Now this is Drake telling Electra like, hey, you have officially graduated. Like you are officially done now. Now for Electra, she cannot believe what she's hearing at the moment because she still believes that Drake still has to teach her more things about changing her life. But for Drake is kind of like, no, I only brought you in to put you on the path. It's now for you to take your path and push forward by yourself. I can no longer hold your hand, but also I already saw some things in you that has completely changed. And so for Electra, the question is now, can she continue to go down the path that Drake has opened up for her to officially take? Now we jump back over to the hand and we see that Carson has been officially taken out, but you didn't have Jeremy there now going through the actual same process that Carson went through. And so with the hand, they're diving deeper into the mind of Jeremy to figure out where in the world Electra is actually at. And so while doing that, we're now establishing that for Jeremy, he had begun to fall in love with Electra, which for me personally is kind of wild because honestly, he only found her because he wanted to change her because what he what she has done to his wife in the past. But that's really it. And so for me personally, it's kind of weird to see him fall in love with the character so fast. But Either way, you do have the hand being able to figure out that right now Electra is with Drake. And so they take Jeremy to kind of use him as a way to get to Electra. Now, they believe that Carson is officially dead. But once you have the hand leave, you have Carson be able to get enough strength to pick up the phone to call Drake. And so as we jump back over to Electra and also Drake, you have Drake continue to push Electra away, kind of like, hey, this is your graduation. Matter of fact, here's some weapons I made for you to replace the ones I broke a while back. Now, these new weapons, they're not really made to kill. They're made to be used in battle, but more as a way to take down your opponents without actually killing them to kind of show that Electra is now going on a new path, a path more like a hero rather than a villain or anti-hero. Either way, while you have Electra continue to pack her things up, the phone rings. It is Carson warning Drake to warn Electra the hand is coming after them right now. Now for Drake, she says, leave now and I'll try my best to hold them off. But for Electra, she's kind of like, no, if I had taken this path because of you, I am going to continue down the path. And on this path, that means I have to protect other people, people like you. And so now we're going to see Drake and also Electra try to make that big stand against the hand when they do arrive. And so as we dive into the ending parts of the third chapter, we do pick up with the hand arriving at the dojo that belongs to Drake. Now, when they arrive, they come full force. They are planning to bring down the entire place, except when they walk into the actual building, well, they are actually confronted by Electra and Drake, who are ready to go. And this leads into the fourth chapter for me, the artwork does get a whole lot better.
And so now we dive into the fourth chapter. Now, the fourth chapter, the first half of the fourth chapter is really more just Electra fighting against the hand. It's her with Drake trying her best to fight against the hand and their army of soldiers that came with them. Now, while you have both sides fighting against each other, I really want to focus more on Electra here because Electra. She's getting caught up in the actual battle, kind of letting her emotions control her body, control her mind, control her moods. Because you have Drake say, hey, Electra, I need you to focus here. If we are going to be able to actually win this battle to pull this off, we got to be on our A game. We got to be on the same page. But the problem is Electra is not on the same page. She is not on her A game. She's getting caught up in the actual battle because the hand represent her past that she's trying to get rid of, trying to move away from. And so in the middle of the battle, she does get captured by the hand. Now, luckily for Electra, Drake was there and Drake was able to actually free her. But once you have Drake being able to save Electra from the hand, we kind of see the hand kind of give us some hints of why they are here. One, it does seem like they want to bring Electra in back into the actual organization, but at the same time, it seems like they are very disappointed that when it comes to Electra, that she has now been taught or trained by the betrayer. Of course, talking about Drake here. But you then have the hand reveal that they have Jeremy. And they say, listen, if you want him back, meet us in your last massacre area where you had your last massacre at. And of course, this is a callback to that major story arc that truly begun the run of Greg Rucka, where he tried to change the character, where she fought against the soldiers back in that major story arc, where the story had actually started off at. And so you have the hand leave with Jeremy, and so you have Elektra and Drake leave the JoJo because it got caught on fire, it's burning down, and they have to get the heck out of there. Right after you have Elektra and Drake being able to get away from the actual uh, dojo, we do learn that Drake has been poisoned. You see, when it came to Elektra letting her emotions take over, and when she was captured for a brief moment by the hand, it gave Drake the chance to save her life, but while doing that, Drake got poisoned. And so, this is Drake dying right in front of Electra, but she tells Electra, listen, if you go after them, you have to make sure when you go at them, you can't go like you did in the dojo, letting your emotions take over your body. You have to go in there with your A game. You have to go in there knowing that you'll be able to actually take them down because you are a warrior, a warrior I have actually trained very well. But she also says a warrior does not fight just for fighting. A warrior fights for a cause. Know your cause before you go into that actual battle. And so then we jump over to Electra meeting up with Carson. So now we know he's still alive for the time being. But you have Carson and her agree to work together to go after the hand to hopefully save Jeremy before he's killed off by the hand. And so you have the two get everything they need to make sure they have at least a fighting chance against the hand. And so the last few pages of this chapter is really being used as a way to set up the final chapter of this book, but to also have the hand kind of wondering, will Electra actually show up to save the life of this man? And so you do have the hand kind of wondering, like, does Electra actually have feelings for her? Now, for me personally, she should not have any feelings for this guy at all in that kind of way because she barely knows him and really they only spend like two weeks together and that's really it. But either way, we do see her and Carson getting ready to fight against the hand. He'll stay behind and be a sniper to kind of give her some cover while she goes down there to fight against the hand to hopefully be able to save Jeremy's life. And this leads into the final chapter. And so now we are able to jump into the final chapter for today's video, where we do pick up with Electra walking up to the hand. Now, when she does, they're kind of wondering, like, okay, Electra, what are you here for? Like, are you here to rejoin us? 
Are you here to actually help us? Are you here to kill us? Are you here to save the life of this man who apparently loves you? Now for Electra, she kind of plays their game a tad bit, trying to say like, I'm here to be with you guys. But they want to make sure. And so when it comes to the big three of the hand here at the moment, they send one of the big three over to read her mind. The problem is though, right when he tries to read her mind, Sniper takes him out just like that. Carson got her back, and they realize that this is a trap. Now, they do call in some lower-level ninjas to help out with the battle, but for Electra, these lower-level ninjas don't truly stand a chance at all. She is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, but also with the backup with Carson being a sniper, she has the edge over the entire group. Now, when it comes to Carson, unfortunately, he has to reload. And so while he's trying to reload, but also trying his best to watch out for Electra, the last two standing members of the hand, the big three, one of them goes over to Carson and takes him out. While you have Electra stay behind to fight against the other one. Now, the one she's fighting against, he begins to try to play with her mind, saying like, look, there goes your sniper. We had just killed him off like you cannot win at all. We have the edge over you. Now for Electra, she's able to get rid of him, only leaving one behind. But she realized the one who had just killed off Carson came back, grabbed Jeremy, and went somewhere else in the desert. And so for Electra, she has to follow him to hopefully save the life of Jeremy. And so once she's able to actually catch up to Jeremy and also the last member of the hand, she kind of realized that she's in a position where she technically does not have a choice here when it comes to saving Jeremy because he's now standing between her and also the last member of the hand. And she knows if she moves, he's going to die. But at the same time, she's tired of the hand coming after her. So what can you do? And so for Electra, she says, the only thing she can do is take her blade and take it through the chest of Jeremy as a way to stab the last member of the hand who is trying to come after her. So she has no choice but to go ahead and sacrifice the man who she may or may not actually care for. And the book ends on that note. And so we're kind of left to wonder Will Electra actually go down a new path or because of the death of Jeremy, will she go back down the old path again? Either way, this is where the book ends. And you're kind of left to wonder what would Greg do if he was able to get another story out of this one right here. But yeah. This is the end for Greg Rucka's run on Electra. So with that being said, guys, please leave me a like down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, see y'all next time. Later.